Welcome to Morning Manor with Pastor Steve Mary. Today's topic, the price of his presence. Simeon had declared how God at the first did visit the Gentiles to take out of them a people for his name and to disagree the words of the prophets as it is written. After this, I will return and will build again the tabernacle of David, which is fallen, and I will build again the ruins thereof. And I will set it up that the residue of men might seek the Lord and all the Gentiles upon whom my name is called, saith the Lord, who doeth all these things. Acts 15, 14 through 17. Why would God want to rebuild that tabernacle instead of Moses' tabernacle or Solomon's temple? David makeshift tent barely qualifies as a tabernacle, but David's tabernacle was God's favorite house. I believe it's because God has some wonderful memories there. What is impressive to God and what is impressive to man are obviously two different things. The most powerful component of David's tabernacle began long before it was built in the heart of a worshiping shepherd boy. David had an unusual hunger for God, always pursuing God's presence, chasing after God's heart. He had a passion for the presence. When David began to talk about bringing the Ark of the Covenant back to Jerusalem, he wasn't interested in the gold-covered box with the artifacts inside. He was, however, interested in the blue flame that hovered between the outstretched wings of the cherubs on the top of the Ark, the Shekinah presence of God. In Moses' tabernacle and Solomon's temple, the Ark resided behind a veil. God never did like that. When Jesus died on Calvary, God ripped the veil from the top to the bottom in such a way that it could never be rewoven again. God doesn't want to be separated from us. Somehow, David learned something during the attempts to bring back the ark back to Jerusalem. This would help him step beyond the limitations of the Aaronic priesthood and the deadly separation of the veil into a whole new realm of intimacy with God. Christians around the world today are saying we want revival, but unfortunately, we haven't learned from David's mistakes. We try to cram the holy things of God and a new cart of man's making, thinking that God will be pleased. But God won't let oxen pull on carts, carrying his glory. We expect someone else to sweat out the hard part of revival. All we want to do is to sing and dance in the procession. These man-made centered revival go smoothly until we hit a God bump at the threshing floor. God is saying, you can't handle me casually. You're going to have to sweat it out. The ark was only to be transported on the shoulders of the sanctified Levites' hard work. Upon the second attempt, David learned his lesson. David was so passionate for God's presence that he began to dance as the ark entered into Jerusalem. David began to value the things that God values. But his wife, Micah, valued dignity over deity. God cursed her with barrenness. They're always going to be critics of true worshippers. They always have an issue with how you worship. You dance too much, you shout too loud, you run too frequent. Ah, but if you're not a true worshipper, you're barren. You can't seek his deity and maintain your dignity. It is time to abandon the spectator service and become a participator. Are you willing to pay the price for God's presence? Immediately when they set the ark down, David demanded that the Levites offer 24-hour day worship to the Lord. The worshippers became the veil around the ark. They had their backs turned on man to worship God in their midst. God does not move. He's always the same. But we move through the intensity of our worship. The thought of the day, you can seek his deity and maintain your dignity. God bless you today, in Jesus' name. Please remember to like and subscribe to my page on YouTube. Your support is much appreciated.